Yeah, where is it? There it is. Hey, everybody, Jeffrey Power is here, and welcome to another episode of Wearable Today. I just realized I didn't have this on. I'm just going to do this, boo, like that, and probably messed up the whole system by doing that. Today, we're going to be talking about a new update in Android Wear, which could possibly change the game when it comes to Apple and Android having their watches and Apple having their watches. We're also going to talk about the Apple Watch. You're not getting no Apple. You don't need no Apple Watch. It's not even going to show up. It's all vaporware anyway. Um, I will talk about nails that he uses trackpads and a whole bunch more. This is this is season. Welcome to season three and episode seventy and season three of Wearable Today. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put in a Geek, and you are on the show we call Wearable Today, the show where we, we show off wearables, we talk about wearables, we interview wearables, the wearables come to the show, and then they leave. And that's pretty much how, how that works. My name is Jeffrey Powers, you can find me, uh, my Twitter handle is Geekazine, or uh, you can uh, email me over at jeff at wearabletoday.com. And as always, my two co-hosts in crime, in the plan, the man with the camera and the bird that's squawking, Mr. Luke Wallace. Hey, Jeffrey. Yep, I'm Luke Wallace, and this is Birdie. Say hello to the people, Birdie. Yes, hello. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Luca, or Luke at wearabletoday.com, or you can email Birdie at Birdie at wearabletoday.com. Yep, that's right. B I R D I E at wearabletoday.com, or you can find me on Google Plus at plus Luke Wallace. All right, plus there Luke you go. Oh, oh I, I missed that. Do that again. Plus Luke Wallace. Plus Luke Wallace. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this show with the uh, with the big the first segment we call Big News Little Arms. Roar. Nice roar. That's awesome. Thanks. First up, You're welcome. Android Wear on iPhone? What? At least that's what it's starting to look like. According to The Verge, Google, like Pebble, is working to integrate their wearables with the iPhone using the APIs that Apple allows. Beyond pure notifications, the companion app that runs on your iPhone would help you interact with other Google services like Gmail, Google Now, and Calendar. Oh, I'm already, I'm already behind. Where, where am I? I'm over here. Yeah. That's pretty cool, by the way. So, yeah. Hey, you know, uh, Mini Augmented Vision is a pair of glasses that offers info on your ride. That's those cool sunglasses that guy's wearing right there. The car determines your location and direction, so if you pass a landmark, uh, you uh, it will indicate that. And so it will also alert you to a speed limit change. It will also alert you to turns, message notifications, and more all on these um, I think I have those Google those glasses somewhere around here. I don't see them. Darn. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you can get them. Uh, there's no price, no point just as of yet. But uh, if you are a big fan of mini, uh, you could get these really cool mini glasses, and yeah, with maybe mini me glasses like this, and go from there. So uh, that's over. If you want to read more on that, go over to engadget.com. Are other parts of your body? Becoming jealous of your wrist because it's getting all the wearable love right now? Well, now your fingernail will have one less thing to be jealous about. CNET reports on the Nailo, that's Nail O, a company that created a touchpad you stick to your nail. You simply stick to your thumb, stick it to your thumb, and swipe or tap with your forefinger for the desired command. You can see the picture here if you're watching the live stream basically goes on the back of your thumbnail. You could even draw on your smartphone or tablet without touching it. Look for the nail -o coming sometime in the future. Who knows? <laughs> sometime in the future. Sometime yeah. In the future. Well, yeah. All right. Well, what if you wanted to talk? What if you wanted to talk on a device and it started to charge your phone? Well, that's what a Chinese team is working with with the ultra thin rollable paper based tri triboelectric nano generator. Try and say that ten times fast. Uh, it's what they're calling it, and the idea is when you talk into the screen, 
Um, you, the device moves, creating a charge that is sent to your phone. No different to the kinetic charging devices that turn movement into battery charge. And if you think about it, uh, today we're recording on 420. So a rollable paper-based triboelectric non-generator is not what you're thinking today. So just calm down a little bit. This, this, it's, it's kind of like, you know, that little tricorder screen that Kirk used to talk into. Maybe that was, uh... Uh, uh, tribe electric non-generator non that uh, charged their tricorders. Just think of it that way. So It's very clever, actually. Thank you. Another clever device comes to us from the folks at Recon Jet. Deemed the glass for sports enthusiasts, this smart device allows you to track your workouts, connect to your phone to get maps, and real-time information. It's also much more reasonably priced than Google Glass at only $699. So that's less than half the price of Google Glass. So are you going to get one? Uh, it says it's for active people, and so that would oh, not... We're, we're not... No, we're not that active. We're not that active. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. All right, well, it comes, uh, it comes down to our next uh, section, and that is the never-ending, we'll never go away, the Apple Watch Watch. Yes, the Apple Watch Watch will ne section will never, ever go away, <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> Apple announced that uh, their April 24th release date is going to be set back just a little bit. How much? Maybe June, maybe uh, maybe more. You know, we reported this a couple weeks ago where he, where Apple had a order for like, what was it, uh, 20 million watches or something? They, their order got cut in half because the screens weren't working uh, correct. And so when everybody just decided to order on April 10th, because they couldn't stand in line on April 24th, they just completely could put the kibosh on that. Um, they did over 1 million orders. And so now they're, they're, they're probably trying to figure out, well, where, what are they going to do? How are they going to fulfill all these orders? Um, and to do that, they'll have to pull from where, you know, getting it from the release, the actual release date. Some of you that actually did order on the 10th found that your release date wasn't, isn't going to be on April 24th. In fact, I would be surprised if your watch shows up within the first week, um, unless you were like the first couple thousand that ordered the watch and uh, you might see a, a wait time as long as June or possibly later um, you might not even get it till the end of summer which is really 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 weird and really interesting so um, are, are you glad are we glad that we didn't get Apple watches Luke well I wouldn't be able to use it with my phone, so there's not a lot of point in me getting an Apple Watch. So I wasn't really in the market for one anyway. But yeah, yeah I mean, it is it is uh, kind of crazy how long it might take to get the watches to them. I think it's also saying that they won't have any available to send to stores to have on hand until June potentially. So. Like they'll just be fulfilling all the online orders. Like people yeah. will come in and try them on and then they'll say, okay, that's great. Now order it online because we can't just have yep. all of these watches sitting in an Apple store hoping that one, people want that exact combination. They'll say, just order it online. So I think they're yeah. saying June could also be before, like before you actually can even walk into a store and say, oh, you have this one? Yeah, I'll take this one. Okay, thank you. Like they may not even carry them in stores to buy until then either. Yeah, and I'm guessing that. Uh, well, we always talk, We always said, you know, that ten thousand dollar watch will probably not be in your store. And uh, and and I did. I do have to admit, I did walk into my Apple store. I don't, of course, I do have the iPhone now. Yeah. I did walk into the Apple store and I did uh, touch one of the watches, and I looked at it for like five minutes and then I left because that's how much interest I really have in the Apple Watch. So uh, it, it was. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It, to me, like I said, I don't wear watches, so it's not really a big thing for me. But for some of you, you know, you've been waiting, you've been waiting, you've been waiting. And uh, if you didn't do the pre-order on the 10th at mid, well, well when like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, um, you yeah. probably would will not get your watch until midsummer, maybe even later than that. So we'll see how it goes, and of course we'll keep you in touch on, on all that stuff. And uh, we've got some really cool stuff coming with the Apple Watch. I've been talking to a couple uh, third-party developers that have been working 
on some really cool things and, and those 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 will be down the road for uh season three of wearable today all right and so finally let's get into our last segment of the show and that is called fund me and as we as i switch here luke doesn't really get this because he's not a musician and that's okay i'm a musician i get this musicians are getting a wearable which Technically, they've already had a wearable out there, but, you know, that's beside the point. Soundbrenner Pulse is coming out with a metronome for your body. And with basically a vibrating device, a big watch vibrating device. I'll, I'll scroll down here a little bit so you can see it. Um, and the, basically the Pulse here, let's flip it over here. This is what it looks like in watch form or, or strap-on form. It's a uh, vibrating device, more powerful than any phone, uh, vibration-wise, so you can actually feel it while you're playing. Musicians will be able to keep time through the pulses in their wearable. The device can be play placed anywhere on your body, your ankle, your wrist, your arm, your wherever, and around your neck, maybe, I don't know. Um, and, and, of course, this will also sync with other pulses in the band. So if you've got a band of five or six people and you're always complaining, you're going too fast, you're going too slow, blah, 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 blah. All you need is one person to tap out the time and then all of a sudden it'll just vibrate. And then you play around along with the pulses. Now, how does that help? Um, well, you know, I've I, I I was a music major, so I learned about all these cool stories about jazz musicians that would take uh, uh, musicians in the back, and and basically it would be like a hazing session to make them learn time and and keep a steady beat. And it can be it's a learned thing. You can learn how to do it, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You can learn how to keep a beat. Um, and it takes hours and takes a lot of practice. And, and uh, well, the exercise we used to do was uh, you, would, you would basically uh, clap eight. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the next time around, you'd leave one out, but you wouldn't count. So you go two, three, five, six, seven, eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four. And you, can, you couldn't do it. You can't do it. You got to be perfectly still. And the whole idea was uh, you, f you figure out the sync because you're working with the other musicians. So you'd have like four or five musicians doing this clapping game all around you. And, and it really works. So with this wearable, they have a lot of... Um, they have a lot of learning sessions and stuff like that, uh, and daily sessions you can you can you can work with, so you can get better in your timing. Uh, for drummers, for bass players, that's perfect. Uh, for lead singers, he probably doesn't care too much. For guitar players, they're just going what. Um, but uh, it's it's very important if the whole band has the same sense of time then you, you get tighter and you get better and it's simple as that so hopefully luke that just clarified your questions which you had before the show started yeah yeah that actually makes a lot of sense i um, i can see now and that it's very very valuable um sounds like sounds like something to be pretty useful uh we had a question more of a comment from eric forty who's watching uh hey, saying saying that it would be good for beginning band students. And it's like, you know what, that's be pretty cool. They could, like a, a music, like a, or a school could buy whatever, 25, 30 of these things and, you know, provide them to the students, you know, throughout the day and basically like, okay, guys, you know, everybody put your little band on, your little silent metronome that'll buzz you. And, you know, okay, I'm going to set the beat now. You know, and now everybody can feel it without having this loud metronome going and everybody's just kind of going along. So it's like, I could see that way you're kind of, oh, yeah. you know, kind of help train. And then, or, and, you know, and then as the year goes on, it's like, it's more of an optional thing. And the students who are like, yeah, I still would kind of like that. Cause you know, or the teacher could say, you need the metronome, but everybody else doesn't. And so I don't want to bug everybody else hearing that clicking sound. Well, that's see, that's, you. that's the thing is, is. I could have perfect time and you could have perfect time and we could play together and still clash. Hmm. Um, it's a, it really is a sync thing. Oh. And if you can't, if you can't, if you, if you don't work with somebody else, you clash. It is, it's as simple as that. I've, I've seen good musicians come together and try to play with each other um, and clash. 
And cause they, they, like they just, neither one, yeah. neither one adjusts. So they just, they refuse to like, I'm not going to speed up at all. And, or I'm not going to slow down at all. Like, it, you know, even if it's just that fraction, yeah. it's, fraction it's, it's, second. you know, well, yeah, kind of, yes, yes. Um, and so it, it's just something that kind of, puts them in sync with each other. Mm. And if it's something, like I said, it's a learned thing. You, anybody that says that they can't get timing down, then they're, uh, they're going from there. And, you know, it's really interesting. There's other, re- there's other ways that you can use this beyond musicians. Um, in fact, as a podcast coach, I tell a lot of people, if you talk too fast, then get them at there, there's one tip I, I give it to a lot, a lot of times where you get a metronome and you have like I have a metronome right down here and the metronome I think it's down here anyway it's a uh, it basically will I, I just saw it where is it <laughs> it's here anyways oh here it is so this one also this is this is an old one this is one of my first metronomes mm-hmm. and I don't even know if there's a battery in here if it is, it's dead. But anyway, as you can see, it's really dusty. I haven't used it in a long time. But uh, um, it does audio and it does a light. So I would tell podcasters to have that light like sitting off the camera. And then you set to a pace like 110. 110 is a speaking pace. And then watch the light. And then you slow down. So if I was to read this, musicians are getting wearable. It would be like, musicians are getting a wearable. Soundbrenner pulses a metronome for your body. Therefore, you start slowing down. So the bottom line is there's, there's more than just music mm. that you would use this for. It, it's, it's, a, it's a great idea. Um, and, of course, they're, they're going for musicians because, you know, it's just, a, it's just a crowd fund. And you can get one, $99, but it won't come out till November. Um, so uh, you, you'll have to wait a while. I'm, I'm on fence whether I want to, want to buy in on this because it, it's, it's nice. But I want to have I want to get four as opposed to one for the whole band. So. I see, I see. Yeah. yeah, no, it seems like a really good idea. And yeah, it sounds like there's a lot more uses to it than the ones they propose. So uh, it could be like there's a lot of there's just a lot of potential yeah. for it. it. Sounds like it's not quite as um, limited as maybe it would seem. Like oh, it's only for people who play the guitar or play in a band yeah. or something like that. Like yeah. it sounds like there's a lot of uh, right. good uses. I mean, I suppose any, you know, any use for a metronome would be exactly, you know, exactly. It'd be that, so, but plus with the, with the, the app apparently has like little games and stuff like that. So you can improve on your, on your timekeeping mm-hmm. skills. So I, I think it's pretty cool. It's a great little product and, and I highly recommend it. Um, and like I said, I'm still, it, it's, it's more of the fact, you know, if I buy into everything that I read, um, I'm going to be broke and you know, $99, you think, well, that's, that's not much, but you know, you have a real job and I don't. So yeah. <laughs> I, just, I can't buy all these little toys. I just can't. I'd love to, if you want to, if you want to buy it for me and say, Hey, here's the gift. Uh, when it comes in November, that'd be great. But you know, other than that, you know, that's, we're just going to have to stick with this and go from there. Speaking of which you, uh, you could promote this you could be a part of this whole thing, Eric. You could be a part of this whole thing. And yes, yeah, I saw your question here. Uh, instead of watching them tap their feet all the time, um, you know, people will tap their feet. That's how it works. In fact, if if you become a more professional musician, you go to the colleges and stuff. You, you go to those things called the colleges and stuff like that. <laughs> they uh, they'll tell you they'll they'll basically they will sit there and go, don't tap your feet. And if you're really good at what you do, you don't you don't move until you have to move. Hmm. And I know that that sounds a little bit pretentious, yeah. uh, but the reality is if you can be a musician that just can sit there and go, ding! Yeah. Ding! Then you're, you're going to, and keep time, you, then, then they're going to love you. Simple yeah. as that. And unless you're going like, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's much. true like when i i don't go to the orchestra a lot but i have been to the uh orchestra um in dallas a couple of times and, and yeah they, they they don't, an i don't see a lot of, like, it's more of a gun salute or something in dallas <laughs> no 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 okay. we, have, we, have, we have a we have a fine uh orchestra here uh i don't see them all like 
you know, you know, kind of yeah. nodding and like getting into it or tapping their feet a lot, you know, or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I would agree. Like, you know what? You're right. I don't notice the professionals tapping their feet along because that would be really annoying to have like a hundred people all tapping their feet. Yeah. <laughs> so. It, it, ha- it does happen. You don't, you don't see a lot of it, but, uh, but good, really good musicians. Cause you know, you're, you're trying to focus on doing this part at this time. And if you're tapping your feet, you're, you're, you're start all of a sudden you're multitasking. Why are you doing those things at the same time? Cause you're already counting in your brain. If you can do it in your brain, you don't need to do it with your teeth or your feet or teeth either way. So anyway, <laughs> my daughter's high school band would get docked. Oh yeah, that's right. During hot competitions, if you, if you tap your feet, you will, uh, you will get docked if they notice that too. Wow. I forgot about that. So it's actually against the rules to tap your feet because apparently yeah. that's cheating in certain or situations. Lazy. Or I guess it just shows an immaturity of, of the, of the timekeeping or, I don't remember, you know, I, I did, I did a couple of those Mm. competitions. I don't remember what it, if it was more of a looks thing or, or whatnot. So Mm. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's, it's been a long time since I've done that. So anyway, um, it's been a great week for you, Luke. Uh, uh, Of course I've been in Vegas. I was uh, working with a sponsor. We got some great videos. I I did a couple extra videos at the National Association of Broadcasters. Uh, These are camera gear, if if you're a camera podcaster type. I I usually do disruption of broadcasting at NAB. So the little things um, that you can improve on your personal studio, um, mostly camera related this this year because I just didn't get a chance to really get through the the hall there. Um, Not too many pictures, but... Luke, you're saving the day on this one because you took a ton of pictures to where you went. And tell everybody where you went. So, uh, I mentioned last week that I was going to be speaking at a conference in California, and that happened. But the more interesting part for most people that are watching is I went to Star Wars Celebration, which was last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I just got home uh, this afternoon as we record this. So I took a lot of pictures. I took uh, a lot more than uh, what has been posted so far, but this is a very good sampling of the kind of photos. Um, It was really neat because most of the main cast of Star Wars was there. Uh, Pretty much everybody except Harrison Ford from the original trilogy and uh, several people from the prequels uh, were there as well. Uh, and just tons of, uh, costumes, uh, lots of fans, you know, dressed up. I dressed up for a couple of days, um, lots of great panels. They showed lots of cool stuff. They, there's, there's a picture of you. With- so this is, this is a really cool picture if you're watching the video. So, uh, that, that's me in my Luke Skywalker costume, right? So I am named Luke and that is like, and I dress as Luke, this, uh, lady is named Leia, and she dresses as Leia. So she's she's got a uh, Cloud City uh, Leia costume. Yeah. And uh, the picture, I don't think, does it uh, justice. I mean, like, in person, she she also kind of looks like Carrie Fisher, I would say, just a little bit. Um, and so it's pretty... Um, it, it, you do a double take. And then here's me with a bunch of other people dressed as Luke Skywalker. Uh, so all the kind of different versions. Oh, that last one looks a lot like uh, Mark Hamill. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The one, the uh, the cel- or, um, not celebration, but uh, uh, last scene of Star Wars. Yeah, New Hope. Yeah, yeah. Except he's got a little goatee, which uh, and so there's me with one of the five hundred first members uh, who actually they got some. Yeah, they got um, some inside information on the new uh, troopers, and so that's actually a like if you go back to the previous picture, that's me with one of them that. Uh, was able to get a hold of like the plans and some kind of early designs so they could make the new stormtrooper outfits. Uh, so it's not a hundred percent accurate, but the, they said the they haven't worked out all the details yet. So it's kind of an early version of it. They're going to refine it a little bit, but uh, cool. at least the reproduction of it, um, you know, the, the filming has all been finished for the, the actual one. So, Oh yeah. And we've seen it. Uh, they just, uh, if you watch the, uh, the, trailer from this weekend 
Yeah, so the new ready. teaser. Yeah, um, that's been it, amazing. So. That, that launched <laughs> Thursday morning at the beginning of Star Wars Celebration. I was not there for that, but they also showed, uh, I, probably my highlight, and not, maybe I'll finish with this, is uh, Saturday morning, they had a panel with the directors of those spin-off movies that they're that, are, that have been kind of rumored of like they're going to do movies that are not numbered one two three four you know like seven yeah. like so they're doing seven eight nine but they're going to do these other ones like interspersed and they were they explained that a lot and mm-hmm. they explained that they are called anthology movies so that's the official term for them and so there's the star wars anthology and the first one which kind of leaked a li- like about a month ago is called rogue one and but they showed us a teaser for Rogue One at that panel. Um, okay. So it's it's really short. They haven't actually started production, so it's not any footage from the actual movie or anything. Uh, but it was it was pretty cool. Uh, they I saw it went up on YouTube because they said don't record it, but people did and they posted it on YouTube and those all got taken down. <laughs> but I'm sure it will get officially put up on YouTube uh, soon. Uh, but really, Rogue One is going to tell the story of the special forces operatives of the rebel alliance that stole the plans for the death star. Okay. So it happens like right before episode four does, because that's, you know, like that you go into episode four and kind of halfway through, they say, okay, we found these plans and we've analyzed them and we found this weakness. So this is going to tell the story of how they got those plans. Okay. So um, really cool. And that's coming out December of 2016. So, uh, this December, episode seven, next December, Rogue One, and then who knows when the next one. They haven't really announced any further dates for other ones, or at least I, I've seen some preliminary ones, but, you know, it's two years out at least, so yeah. uh, you know, probably don't want to get too uh, committed to those dates yet. So. Oh, yeah, and, and, and uh, of course, everything is always subject to change. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. I think if they could, like, they may, you know, who knows, episode seven, they may say, actually, it's going to come out the uh, the week after Thanksgiving or the week of Thanksgiving. Like, if they could do it, they might, but I'm sure they're, they've already well, got that taken care you of. You know that episode seven was actually supposed to come out in 2000. The, uh, the plan, George Lucas laid out the plan at uh, Empire Strikes Back. It was going to be four, five, six. Mm-hmm. And he was going to go back and he was going to tell one, two, three, just like he did, mm-hmm. except he was going to do that like 10, 15 years earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and then by 2000, we were going to have seven, eight, nine. Mm-hmm. And then uh, anything beyond that, uh, I don't think he had plans for, but it was going to be yeah. nine. It was going to be nine movies. We just waited another 15 years for those uh, those movies. And from judging, you know, it's just a teaser trailer, but from yeah. judging from that teaser trailer, I'm kind of thinking that he made the right decision in waiting those 15 years because I'm really, really, really excited for that. So. Yeah, the time frames work out really well for some interesting stories. What they told us uh, at the panel on Saturday morning was that in the first 24 hours, that new teaser trailer that came out on Thursday by Friday morning, it had been viewed 88 million times. So it's like, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's pretty good demand for, <laughs> for Star yeah. Wars. So people are excited my, about this. And my favorite, my favorite meme that's been crawling on the web is the picture of Chewie and, and Han Solo. And, and the meme goes, something just popped up here. Hold on a second. Anyway, the meme goes, um, when, the, when everything else on the internet doesn't matter anymore. Oh, yeah. a picture of Han Solo and Julie. <laughs> yeah. and it, it was true. It was just like every, if it wasn't for that last scene where 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 he just said Chewie were home, everybody would have been like, okay, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But he he did that, and I was like, yeah, because uh, <laughs> yeah, because I mean that's the first viewing of a legacy star. Like that's what they call. You just kept legacy. talking. That was cool. Yeah, I kept talking. <laughs> I'm just gonna talk through that. Sorry, uh, but you got like, yeah, you haven't actually seen Luke Skywalker or Leia or anybody else in those. Like in the first teaser, there weren't any of those people. It was like it was showing a couple of the new actors and stuff like that. So that yeah. was like the first, you know, face from the old trilogy that came back, and it's one of the ones that. Um, 
you know, people all like that, that doesn't really involve himself with Star Wars, right? Harrison Ford, like never talks about Star Wars yep. or, you know, or very rarely, like, you know, he, he avoids it a lot. Whereas the, you know, you see the other one. Yeah. So. I love the, I love the Jimmy Kimmel skits where, where Chewie showed up and. and yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. what I was thinking of. I'm like, well, he actually has, but, oh, yeah. I want to give you one piece of, I don't know if uh, this is kind of inside information that we heard about at the Mark Hamill panel. So um, if you've seen the teaser, I'm going to, like, if you haven't seen it, you need to go watch it. If, you probably have seen it if you have any interest in, <laughs> in geeky stuff. So, um, we, at Mark Hamill said that they recorded the audio for the new teaser just a couple of weeks ago. So, you know yeah. how he has that voiceover. Yeah. And people were confused by that voiceover a little bit, but he, he confirmed, like people figured it out after a little while, but um, he confirmed that, yeah, that's actually the lines from Return of the Jedi. And they showed Return of the Jedi at Celebration, and I watched it. So I got, we all got to kind of see that part of the movie happen uh, where he's talking to Leia on Endor and saying, you know, and it's really interesting because the lines don't go exactly how they do in the trailer, but uh, he says, you know, the force is strong in my family. You have that power too. I have it. My father has it. My sister has it. And that's how it goes in the, in the movie. Um, but you know, they rearranged it a little bit, but they had him come in and speak those lines again for this teaser. And he said that was only a couple of weeks ago. So they haven't more like this teaser hasn't been in the works for very, or hasn't been, you know, finished very long. Really? Um, he just recorded those lines. And then, so he asked the, the director, or, uh, you know, JJ Abrams or whoever was putting the teaser together, um, the producer maybe. And he asked like, so which lines did you use? Did you pull the ones from Jedi and use those lines or did you use, the ones that I just recorded because he basically had recorded exactly the same as how it was said before. Okay. And he said that they used both. They told him that they actually are using the lines from Jedi and that's what you're hearing mostly. And then the lines that he recorded two weeks ago are actually in there as like a kind of a reverb on that to kind of fill out the sound a little bit. Okay. So you're hearing 30 years ago, Mark Hamill talk and or 40 years ago, and now Mark Hamill talk, like those same lines together. That's um, crazy. He said That's the outtakes crazy. were really funny because he's like, because he's, you know, saying those lines, my father has it, I have it, the neighbor has it, my CPA has it. You know, he was, he was doing all this during the, during the recording, and he's like, yeah, they cut a whole bunch of that out. <laughs> so he didn't do, I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, he's no. a pepper. She's no? Okay. No, but he's like, all of you here at the panel, you all have it. And we're all like, Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, you know he's, he's doing some fan service. But uh, yeah, yeah, great, great time. I need to post up stories about each of those pictures because each, each picture that I posted there had kind of a little story to it. Um, yeah. And well, then I'm going to have a lot more. Yeah, definitely go see those pictures because we, we showed them online. If, you, if, you're, yeah. uh, if you're listening to it, just go, go to Luke's uh, Google Plus page plus Luke Wallace. Mm-hmm. And uh, and go from there. It, we went a little bit long on that. And uh, uh, no Mad Max fans here. We, yeah, of course, I'm a Mad Max fan there, Eric. Um, but yeah, we, we we're not gonna get this. Not <laughs> I, we yeah. could talk geek. Yeah, if you want to yeah, talk yeah. geek in that geek, aspect, that's fine. We're geeking out on wearable technology, and and technically, a lot of Star Wars stuff is wearable technology. In fact, I always say I want to I want to put together a oh what's that. So this is something I got. So this is Star Wars Celebration. This is an exclusive. <laughs> These were the 3D glasses. They actually say oh, Star Wars Celebration myself. 2015 on them. It's real small, so I, I won't try to show it on camera. Okay. So these were so you could watch the 3D movies. They actually showed episodes one, two, and for the first time, worldwide premiere episode three in 3D at Celebration. Nice. And then they showed four, five, and six, obviously in 2D, uh, but... Yeah, they, nobody wants to watch that in 3D. Yeah, it's like, eh, yeah. So, uh, th- so there was a wearable. Like there, okay. they did they did give away a wearable, and I I got that. So that's, <laughs> I mean, it's not wearable. Well, anyway, yeah. I always I always said that I always wanted to make a picture, you know, with uh, with Darth Vader's helmet and saying the original wearable technology. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like we're getting there. We're getting there. Hey, you you could do that with one of your shirt things, right? You know, play play with the characters on there and to make it look like Darth Vader. Probably, probably. 
Anyway, so, all right. It's not, not a bad idea. <laughs> Let's move on because we went we yeah. went a little bit long in there, but it, it was Sorry. cool. It was very cool. No, no, it was very cool. Thank you very much for that. And uh, and I, I saw a lot of pictures. A lot of friends of mine were out in in the area, um, taking pictures, and and you know I was jealous. But you know I was in Vegas too, uh, having a lot of fun there. So, a um, couple things before we before we move on to the main focus, uh, which we're going to be talking about what's happening with uh, Android Wear. A couple things with the show. First of all. You know, wearabledaytoday.com forward slash, if you're looking for some wearables, check out this link, wearabledaytoday.com forward slash deals. And what that is, is uh, it's going to be at different deals. Like, for instance, you could get yourself a Moto 360 for about 150 bucks. These are a lot of open box, refurbished type stuff. Uh, you know, anything from Moto 360 to Jawbone. So I don't think there's going to be any Apple Watches on there, so uh, that probably won't happen. But, you know, that support helps support the show over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. Um, if you're looking to get a wearable, um, check that out over there. And then, of course, uh, we're going to start a new segment here in the upcoming weeks called Guess the Steps. And that's the, that's the hashtag right here, Guess the Steps. So here's what's going to happen. Luke has his Moto 360, which counts how he moves through the day. I have my Apple phone. And, and, and of course, if you, if you haven't checked out on your iPhone this thing, it's pretty cool. It's called Health. I'm going to zoom in on this really quick. And this is, this is the dashboard of Health. And it doesn't look too good right now, but as I go to month, you're going to see the interesting Batman spike that I have right there. Um, that's, uh, that's the 60,000 steps, six, no, 70,000 steps, 70,000 steps I took last week while I was in Vegas and NAB. So, uh, so since both of our wearables can count how many steps that both Luke and I take, we're going to start a new contest. And that contest is Guess the Steps, and that's where this hashtag comes in. So each week, uh, we, we, yeah, we're, we're figuring out how to do this and where to do this. Um, each week, you'll, you'll post. We'll tell you to post in this place, and you'll, you'll put in your email address in your name and your Twitter handle or whatever, and then how many steps you think that both Luke and I actually did, from anywhere from 5,000 to 500,000 steps. And then, uh, and then each week... We will uh, we'll, we'll pick a winner and try and get some some fun little gifts here so you can uh, be part of it. Um, and it's just you know I'm going to be walking more now that the now that the weather's uh, clearing up and uh, and getting a little bit healthier and get rid of Mr. Beer Gut, which is my permanent wearable accessory. <laughs> um, and I'm hoping to get rid of that permanent wearable accessory. So we're gonna we're just gonna give this a try and see what happens. So uh, uh, more information as we go. On season three, guess the steps is going to be the hashtag. So if you want to tweet that out, you want to Facebook that out, guess the steps, um, and of course hashtag wearable today, uh, two hashtags right there, and go from there. And once again, go over to wearable wearabletoday.com forward slash deals to find some great deals on a wearable you can own yourself. All right, let's get into the focus of this thing and uh, and everything. The whole reason why we're here. Well, maybe not, but you know, it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun little reason why we're here, um, and that is with the Apple Watch now in the final final days of release. Hopefully, Android kicks up the level with their new Android Wear. It's a new update that allows for more functionality, including Wi-Fi, emoji, gesture control, emoji creation. Uh, through drawing and a whole bunch more. Also, all signs pointing that Android Wear is wants to be on your iPhone really, really bad um, with the update, and it's looking pretty cool uh, to do that. So it, it, one watch to rule them all, I guess you could say. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, you, you found this article, uh, Luke. What, what are your thoughts on this? Or Bertie has more thoughts on this. Okay. Yeah, Bertie hears and, something. She's like, there's and, something going on. I'm missing it. And playing Ingress, as Eric said. So if you want to play Ingress in there, I think. Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, Ingress, I think it just added, is just added support for it or announced they would be supporting it soon. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been around to do that. I've been, been uh, doing Star Wars stuff. Uh, but yeah, I brought this up because these are some pretty big changes. Uh, one that I think is really unique is the whole emoji thing. I mean, emojis are blowing up right now uh, for whatever reason. Uh, it seems like they've been around a while, but uh, they are 
becoming more and more popular. There's even that one social network, social network where it's all emoji, where yeah. your username is emoji, all you can send are emoji. There is no text entry. It's all emoji. So yeah. everything is like, so people love that. And apparently Google has been working on sure, like figuring out how to create an emoji from a very crude drawing. People say this is kind of like the, uh, the picture drawing thing that Apple worked on. So yeah. yeah. And that little slider in the middle lets you go back and forth. I, don't well, know I, haven't, can... I haven't shown that yet. So let me, let me flip over to here. Right. Okay. So, so this is the, this is the picture that they have on their, um, uh This is over at uh, the verge.com and it's one of those uh, split things. So as you move the cursor around, you can see, so there is a, it draws a house and as we slide it over, um, it makes a house off of there and it makes sense. I mean, look at it. How much space do you have on a watch? You have almost no space to do anything. Yeah. So you better have your icon very succinct and very clear for them to, uh, to be able to click on. So to create an emoji like that, that's really quick. Um, even, even with the iPhone, when you're doing, uh, texts now, when I start to say things like uh, I tell Jennifer I love you, all of a sudden, instead of love, you see a heart with an arrow in it. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting, getting into this uh, hieroglyphical, maybe Egyptian type thing when it comes to uh, talk it comes like an to Egyptian. Wearables. Yeah, talk yeah. like an Egyptian, a wearable like an Egyptian, uh, emoji like an Egyptian, I suppose, and, and go from there. So uh, yeah. maybe that's the whole idea of the emojis. Yeah, I think I think it's really neat though that there it's a completely different approach. I don't think people should really think of it as copying at all because it's kind of a different idea of instead of you sending an image like a hand drawn image which takes a lot more data, sending just that you know that Unicode character of this is the emoji I want to send is actually a lot less work. Uh, so you know, and it has a much better fidelity. So if yeah. it converts it correctly um it works out pretty well but um it'll be interesting to see how well that works in practice i'm sure for all the common stuff it'll work well um it'll be kind of interesting like what if you just try drawing something and see like hey what emoji did, would that turn into you know a couple lines here a little swirl let's let's see what does it get hey you know smokestack you know that kind of thing you know what what could it be you know um what em what weird emojis and then there's the autocorrect issue right of like yeah i was trying to draw a happy face and it drew poop face you know like that kind of thing uh, <laughs> and, you know, like, wow, really i didn't expect i didn't expect poop face but i was thinking of something else but you know that, that's we won't talk about that but yeah that's that's you know spell chunk for emojis yeah like, i think that should be our game maybe we should do a win loser draw type uh oh, game yeah. with, our, with our watches to, yeah i have to guess like <laughs> Or yeah, like look at the autocorrect of like, you know, there's a sentence with this emoji in it and it's like, what was that emoji supposed to be? Because obviously you got it wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I'd have to put some thought into that and I don't think yeah. I'm ready for that. That, that, that might be a little bit more work, but yeah. I, think, uh, I think there's something there. Uh, okay. There's also uh, Wi-Fi capabilities that you mentioned that are kind of interesting. So people are like, oh, they're adding in Wi-Fi to be like Apple Watch. It's like, well, actually a lot of these watches that have been put out already had Wi-Fi radios in them, the software just didn't really support it. There wasn't any way to use the Wi-Fi radio, but they put in a, a radio and a chip just so that if there was a future update that could use it, they would. Uh, yeah. And so now that update is coming, uh, much like accelerometers and other things that have been in there. Uh, so there's some of that. There's also some black and white modes. I think this is this is one that sounds like a lot more work for developers because you have to provide some sort of, or, or you can, I suppose it's optional, uh, to provide a black and white kind of a low power mode. So what will happen is the screen will use the minimum amount of data and color and power to display a, a black and white version of whatever, you know, whatever it is. And they show a couple of examples of a map or a, a checklist or something like that uh, getting converted down to black and white and it, yeah. it's interesting uh the other big one is the the accelerometer support so what they're going to have is a hands-free mode of yeah if you're looking at a card and you want to look at the next card and your other hand is you know holding something let's say you know you're holding a bag as you wait for the you know for the bus and so you're checking your watch and then you're like "Ooh, what's the next card and so you just want to you know do a little click of your wrist so it's a neat idea um, you would think that 
if it didn't work very well, they would just not release it as part of the update. So I want to think that they've tested it, you know, significantly. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So people and, are and saying, eh. And from what uh, what it says is, uh, if if you uh, if you have an LG watch, you're the first to uh, actually get uh, this Android. Because I'm I'm guessing it's not going to be out anytime soon. Um, or something probably more towards the Google I/O uh, type uh, release date. Yeah, I mean Google I/O is now just over a month away. So they they did say next month they would be releasing this update for. Yeah the rest of the watches, the other seven or eight yeah. Android Wear watches, which are all basically running the same software uh, minus, you know, some hardware driver differences or whatever. But uh, so, yeah, they said the LG Watch Urbane is uh, getting the, you know, getting it first. Maybe they're doing that as kind of a beta test as they want to yeah. get it out into the wild. And, and so, well, well, let's put it on the Urbane and then we will roll it out to everybody else after, you know, after a month or, you know, maybe if it goes really, really well and they get very few reports of any issues, you know, maybe sooner, but, um, next month isn't actually that far away. So it could, that could mean next week or that could mean, you know, a couple of weeks from now. I'm guessing it's going to be more towards the, uh, more towards the IO. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. And then, and then of course your Moto 360, since they, you, they work close with, uh, with Google, hopefully you'll, you'll get that within the next couple, couple months. And, and, uh, and yeah. we'll really get to see uh, what uh, what it is. And, and you know, I have I I really have been looking at different watches and what I would get. Um, and uh, you know, the Urbane's only what three hundred dollars or something like that. Something so like that. it's it's you know that's that's one of the uh, there's a possibility there that I could go for that watch and and then mm-hmm. get the update uh, and see what it does and see how it really works with the iPhone. Um, although I understand the functionality for the iPhone is is something in the future, uh, you can still connect up, and you can still get your tweets and stuff like that. But nothing, you're not going to see uh, a full functionality between the two, right? Yeah, that, that that's kind of what we said uh, during the big news, little arms that uh, it's it's going to have a significant amount of functionality, much like the Pebble, and it may be able to tie into more of the Google services than other ones because they control all of the Google apps, obviously, on the iPhone. And so they might be able to kind of interact with those particular apps a little bit more. Maybe they could even provide hooks for other developers if they are like, hey, I know you guys are building for Apple Watch. If you want to support Android Wear on iPhone, you can add in the hooks and then the app could use it. So, I mean, there's always that possibility too, yeah. but um, because there are ways to share data between apps uh, now a lot a lot easier, a lot better. So um, it'll be interesting to see. These do sound like really good Google I.O. announcements. Like it would be really cool if they're, during the Android Wear they said, and we're releasing the app today to, you know, put Android Wear on your iPhone. Like that would be really cool. So yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, some very exciting stuff in the next coming uh, upcoming weeks when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, if you haven't gotten your Apple Watch yet, you know, you could probably get yourself an LG Urbane or a, or a Moto three hundred and sixty and have some really good functionality coming soon. The, it's definitely worth looking at because those watches you you definitely have a little bit more variety in the looks and a little bit more variety in the price. Uh, and you know, the functionality may not be. As big a difference, uh, there will be some things that you can only do with Apple Watch. The sending yeah. a heartbeat, you know, I'm I'm sure that would be very hard to do. Although eh, maybe not impossible, but um, probably very hard to do with a um, with any other watch on the iPhone. Uh, so, you know, uh, you could you could do it, but probably not as easily as you could with the with the I would, Apple Watch. I would think that it would be in Apple's best interests to let other watches in and kind of cross connect with a lot of the apps because, and then of course uh, not a hundred percent of the functionality, but you know, more like 70% of the functionality. Mm -hmm. So eventually they would say, you know, their first watch might become an LG or a Moto 360, but then the next watch could be an Apple watch. 
um, yeah. and go from there. So, um, but you know, if if you're like me, who lives in such a cross community, I mean, I have PC right here, I have a Mac right here, I have an iPhone right here. In the other room, I have Android. Um, I have a Linux desktop over there. It's just like. You know, I, I live in so many different worlds. Something like that would be perfect for me because I can live in all those worlds mm -hmm. and and uh, work in harmony. So, uh, But a lot of people don't. A lot of people, we, we, we're starting to see that mixture of Android and iPhone, that mixture of Windows and, and Mac. Um, but, and, and they're not as, as, as much as I, somebody like you or me are, are part of. Uh, so, but you know, there are, there are people that do that and, and it'd be nice to be able to take a watch and then in a couple of years I get a new watch and I could hand it down to somebody else that has a device that it can be used on. That, I think that would be awesome. It's, I think you make a good point about the upgrade path. Like it's really going to be interesting because watches are not something that people usually think about upgrading. Yeah. Um, you know, if you buy a relatively inexpensive one, eventually it just gets so old and kind of falls <laughs> apart and breaks and you replace it. But if you buy a nice watch, it's typically something that you hold on to for a long time. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. You pass it down. Like you said, like it, it like it, like there yeah. are heirloom watches, you know, your grandfather's, you know, pocket watch, those kinds of things. So it's like with this kind of stuff, I, I don't think people are going to be passing it down for generations, but you know, maybe oh, yeah. especially, especially when you can go to the mall and gazelle it for 150 bucks or something like that. Oh yeah. If you could do that. Yeah. I think, yeah. So I think people will be, yeah, it'll be a lot like phones. Um, yeah. but I, 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 I don't think people are going to want to upgrade their watch every two years. I think they're going to want to keep it for longer than that. So it'll be interesting to see how long the software updates can, can keep something active. You know, I said the same thing about the television, you know, uh, and then you, we used to have, you know, the CRT monitors. And when I grew up, it really, when the TV died, you, buy, you bought a new TV. Yeah. Now it's like, uh, I, I've, I've had analysts tell me, oh, TVs are a two year uh, purchase now. <laughs> and it's like, no, they're not. They're, they're maybe a five year purchase upgrade, but not two years. But, you know, I know a lot of people that, you know, Christmas time comes and Black Friday and they get sucked in those deals and next thing they know they have a 40 inch TV that's actually worse than the 26 inch TV that they bought a couple of years earlier because yeah. you know it's 40 inches and they don't look at 720p versus 1080p LED and or, or 120 megahertz as opposed to 60 megahertz so yeah. um, and and if it's just crazy but yeah we're we're getting into a world where I think everything is two years um, not only just TVs, not only just watches, not only just smartphones, but also computers, also car. You know, you, you do two-year leases on cars, yeah. um, and some people drive cars till their the wheels fall off. But it's a two-year, it's a two-year world. It's as simple as that. Hmm. And yeah. uh, and then we upgrade like that. That pair of cardboard glass right there. Two years, I'm going to have an upgraded version of that. Simple <laughs> as that. Much so. newer cardboard, much nicer, you know, maybe exactly. uh, wax coated, you know, so it holds up better in the rain, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can definitely see it. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying, I, I don't think you're wrong. It just, I don't know. It just, it makes me like, I know I don't, I don't yeah. work that way. Like, but you know, I guess I'm too old school at this point. I'm, I'm becoming an old man. Well, I bet you in certain, well, yeah, in certain aspects you probably do. I mean, you, you, we were talking before the show and you were talking about your Nexus 4 and, and how mm -hmm. it's starting to get to the point where it needs to be replaced. Um, that, and that's going to be a two-year thing. And then I've had that like three already. So. Okay. And then the next thing you know, you're going to have to replace Birdie because it's more than two years. And then oh, gonna, no, not Birdie. And no. then I'm going to have to replace my, my guest host because it's been more. No, oh, it's been three years. Oh, my goodness. No, we're, we're on the third year. So I can't replace you now. Sorry. You got to stick around. Oh, did I make the did I make you the, made the cut? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got I got the me. list around here somewhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that does it. You know, uh, any any final thoughts on on this? I I personally like this. I, I I it makes me feel more comfortable to get a different watch other than the Apple Watch. I didn't like the squareness of the Apple Watch. I I I've I've been saying it since day one. A lot of women probably will not wear an Apple Watch. Yeah, and I might be wrong. You know, I'm. You know, I, uh, me and fashion. You know, the, the, that's not my thing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I look at these Apple watches, and and it's so geared towards men. 
Um, and of course, you know, you have to have a big face watch because that's how you got to do the touch and stuff like that. But I don't see a lot of women really getting excited over any type of a smartwatch just yet. And, I, and like I said, I might be wrong. There might be a lot. It might be more women than men. But uh, I'm, I'm guessing uh, once a really elegant watch comes out, that's what uh, that's what they'll go for. But for the most part, being able to have something that's that's a little bit more cross compliant, I'd be happy with on there. Yeah, yeah. So. I think it's I think it's cool. I think that it's it's great to have this competition in wearables, especially in watch wearables, yeah. because. You know, would Android Wear be doing these things without the Apple Watch? Mm, maybe, maybe not. It's kind of hard to say. Would they be doing them as quickly? Mm, probably not. They would probably yeah. be, you know, like, well, I don't know if we want to do this. And, you know, like they might not be going, like pushing themselves quite as hard uh, okay. because they've got some competition. So I think it'll be good because Apple will see, you know, what everyone else can do with their platform. If they can get this running on iPhone to a you know pretty feature parity, you know, where, where people aren't missing much by using Android Wear on, on iPhone. Uh, maybe some people might even like it better. You know, I think that'll push Apple to, you know, innovate faster, uh, maybe not any more than they would have, but at least do things a little bit quicker, put a little bit more emphasis on it yeah. internally. So I, I think it's great all around because it just means that, you know, the stuff that I'm using will get better. The stuff that you're using will get better, whatever that is, because everybody exactly. will be trying to, everybody will be trying to one up each other in good ways. Like, you know, you throw in some, uh, little, um, what do you call it? Uh, thing. Yeah. You, <laughs> so, yeah. Some little thing, some, some little, uh, gimmick, I guess yeah. is the right word. Like, you know, Oh, send a heartbeat, you know, which, okay, I, you know, it makes you feel closer to someone. Like, ah, it feels kind of like a gimmick to me. Yeah. Um, oh, it's like, it's like Samsung and their little tap to send. They, they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but it's, I think it's still a feature on Samsung phones. But when they, were, they, you know, they started the campaign, the next big thing, mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was one of their things is they showed the stuff that Apple didn't have on there. So, yeah. 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 So it's like some of those are gimmicks, but some of them really do matter. And people say, oh, yes, once I have that feature... Mm -hmm. I do not want to try to live without that feature. Like it is, it is really important. I use yeah. it all the time. So, uh, yeah, um, like, like, like the steps, like the health features on. Oh yeah. Yeah. The health stuff. Like now that I've got that, I'm like, I don't want to forget my watch anywhere <laughs> because I want to, exactly. I want those steps to count. Uh, so yeah, especially if we're going to do guess the steps. So exactly. Cause I don't want to always be the one who's like, yeah, I did uh 4,000 steps all last week. I pretty much sat at my desk and did nothing. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that, I don't want to be that guy. So, yeah. um, you know, I think, it, I think it'll be good. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, there we go. all yeah. right. Well, you know, hey, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, do you, you, are you going to be sticking with your Apple watch? Or are you going to be, uh, taking a look at the new Android where, of course, you know, they're saying it's the biggest, uh, biggest advancement in Apple and, and Andro I'm sorry, Android where, but the reality is Android where is only one year old. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there. Uh, but let us know what your thoughts are. If you're, if you're sticking with Apple, if you're moving with, uh, with Android, let us know. Uh, you can contact me over at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek, Jeff at wearabletoday.com. And of course, Luke, where can they find you? Luke at wearabletoday.com, Birdie at wearabletoday.com, B I R D I E at wearabletoday.com, M O U S E, and Luke Luke on Twitter. You stole that from me. Good job. <laughs> Did Birdie get any email? Do we have any uh, emails? Not that I've person? noticed. Uh... Okay, Eric Forty, you're not doing your job. I'm just telling you that right now. So. Yeah, if you're not going to email Birdie. Uh, yeah, what's out of that? So, all right, well, thanks a lot, Luke, for uh, being on another episode of Wearable Today, episode number 70, season three. We started season three. Yay! So programming notes, uh, we're going to be here next week and the week after. Uh, uh, there are There is some rumblings of me going back to Vegas next, or no, not Vegas, in, in uh, another direction next month but we'll see what happens right now uh we're, we're going to be just uh puddling along every single monday night at eight at uh, 9 p.m eastern 8 p.m central and 6 p.m spe specific pacific specific. specific yeah they're now specific like sp paschetti 
So anyway, uh, if you want to be on the show, if you've got a wearable that you want to show off, let us know. We, you know, we can we can throw you on the hangout there. Um, and we got uh, some of our friends coming back. I know Marco has got some cool 3D stuff he really wants to show off. Um, and then of course we've got a couple other guests coming down the line here. So exciting times in wearable technology. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. We're going to see you next week. And until then, you guys geek out. You watched another episode of wearable today formally this week in google glass goodbye